this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to texture a dress for hero images and render it with Sager. In previous tutorials in this series, I created a silk gazar fabric, which I will now use as the base material for this dress. Substance Painter is a great solution for fashion asset texturing, and the way I will use it is by layering several elements. First, I will apply a variation of the base material, then I will use several height and normal layers to add folds, wrinkles and other elements that will contribute to a realistic result. I will add these up going from large to medium to small scale creases and imperfections. Finally, I will work on the French seams and the stitching. Although all of these can be painted by hand with painter's brush tools, I will favor a more parametric approach based on fill layers in this tutorial. I will demonstrate several different techniques to that end. To start this off, I create a new painter document with an Adobe standard material and I load my mesh. I set the document to 4K, check Use UV Tile Workflow, as I will be using several tiles, and turn off Auto Unwrap, as I want to keep my existing UVs. My UVs are laid out over four tiles, which are listed in the Texture Set List panel. Before I start texturing, I go to the Shader Settings, turn off Subsurface Scattering, as I won't be using it, and enable anisotropy, which I will need to view my fabric correctly. Next, in the texture set settings, I click the plus button to add an isotropy level, an isotropy angle, and opacity to my existing channels. These are necessary to account for anisotropy and opacity on my fabric. I have to do one more thing before texturing, and that is to bake some mesh maps. Baking converts several characteristics of the mesh to maps so that they can be used by filters and generators. They are also combined with the painted textures when exporting the final maps. I make sure all my tiles are selected, set the resolution to 4K, and select the maps I want baked, in this case normal, ambient occlusion, curvature, and position. Finally, I load my high poly mesh from which painter can calculate normal on the low poly mesh I use for painting. You can create a high poly mesh by exporting the same dress from this teacher or other fashion app at a higher resolution. Don't worry if you don't have this, it is not necessary. I click Bake Selected Textures with the default settings and painter bakes the selected maps. These maps are now applied to the mesh. They are visible in the texture set settings and can be viewed by cycling through the channels in the 3D viewport. Time to import my base material. From Designer, I select Send to Substance 3D Painter with my package selected and the material appears in Painter's Assets panel. The process is the same if you use Substance Sampler to make your materials. I drag and drop the material onto the mesh and it becomes a fill layer in the layer stack. The parameters I created and exposed while making the material are here and I will adjust these as well as the material styling and filtering to get the desired result. If you haven't already, you may want to watch the previous tutorials in this series that show how I created a silk gazar material with four different methods. I will now build several layers of large, medium and small creases to create an intricate realistic result while hiding all layers I am not actively working on. This will allow me to focus on each individual layer before I finally blend all the layers together. For large folds, I will load some displacement maps I previously created in the sculpting application and use them here as height maps. Substance Painter largely eliminates the need for sculpting directly on the mesh and favors a non-destructive workflow fully based on parametric texture maps. Using displacement maps generated from sculpting on the mesh as height maps 
brings together the best of both worlds. Loading the first map will load all four maps, one for each UV tile that I'm using. I create a fill layer, turn off all channels except height, and drag and drop the height maps into the height input field. I select the height channel in the layers panel and reduce the strength of the layer before naming it appropriately and hiding it. To create more large folds, I will make a second fill layer and only leave its height channel on as well as its color temporarily for visual clarity while editing. I right click on the material and add a black mask which will render the full layer invisible until I add brighter elements to it to reveal parts of the layer. I then right click on the mask and add a generator. I click in the generator field and select the UV border distance generator which generates an area along the dress's UV islands which are also its pattern seams. After adjusting the mask settings to start strongly at the edges of the patterns and taper off toward the inside of the patterns, I go back to the material settings and turn off the color which was only there to help me visualize the result. I then add a 3D simplex noise to the height and adjust the settings to achieve the desired effect of large folds near the seams. It's worth spending some time testing various noises at different scales and settings to achieve different results for each kind of fabric and garment. There is a distinct line here cutting through my folds and this is caused by my mask. Adding a blur filter to my mask fixes this. After naming this layer and adjusting its opacity, I will hide it and create yet another fill layer, this time for medium creases. Once more, I will turn off all channels but the height and this time I will add a Crystal 2 procedural texture to it and adjust its styling size to simulate medium sized wrinkles. To apply the texture selectively, I add a black mask to the layer, add a UV border distance generator to it and adjust its settings to contain the creases near the seams. I then add a blur at a low intensity to both the material and the mask to smooth out the creases a little. Finally, I pull back the layer's opacity to make the creases more subtle. I then right click on the layer and select Duplicate layer from the context menu. This will duplicate the creases layer with all its parameters, masks and filters intact and it will be the basis for a new layer with smaller creases. From the material settings, I increase the tiling and reduce the scale to make the creases smaller and I adjust the contrast, balance and other settings of the procedural texture to get to more believable results. To finish this, I go back and adjust the materials and masks blur filters to get smoother transitions. It's now time to turn back on all of my layers and adjust their opacity so that they all combine in a convincing way. The result has to be subtle as this is essentially a formal dress so I keep the height opacity numbers fairly low. Next I want to flatten the seams a little to give the impression of French seams which are seams used with sheer fabrics that attempt to be invisible by enclosing raw edges. To do this, I create a new fill layer with a black mask with a UV border distance generator. I leave the fill material to the default for now. I adjust the settings so that the mask affects around half a centimeter on both sides of the seams. In the layers panel and in the height channel, I set the layers mode to replace and the opacity to 10. This partly overrides the height of the previous layers and flattens the selected areas. I also add a blur with a very low setting to smooth out the transition of the mask. I name the layer accordingly and turn off all of my layers once again. Another great way to introduce wrinkles, creases and folds is using the inflate shrink wrap filter on a new fill layer and adjusting its settings to imitate specific fabrics.
There are several options here that can combine to achieve considerably varied results. I use it here for some medium-sized folds on my silk gazar. I need some additional creases for the whole dress and for this I will use a different technique. I click the plus button in the assets panel to add an image I previously downloaded from Adobe Stock. Any similar image of a flat wrinkled fabric or sheet will do as long as it's monochrome, grayscale or a normal map. I set the type to texture and import the resource to my project. I then create a new fill layer with only the height channel enabled and drag and drop the image into the height input field. For normal maps you can use the normal channel input field. I adjust the size and position using the bounding box in the 2D view. Because the image is low bit depth, it gives me a grainy result, so I add a blur to the layer to eliminate this. I lower the layer's height opacity to make the result subtle and name the layer accordingly. Now I need some stitching and I will make it procedurally. To achieve this, I will combine two masks with UV border distance generators and one with a procedural texture. First, I add a new fill layer and adjust the settings to make a rough non-metallic with positive height for the stitching material. I then add a black mask with a UV border generator to the layer and set its parameters to 0.05 for balance, 1 for contrast, 0 for smoothness and 0.1 for distance. I then add a second UV border generator and set its parameters to the same values except the balance at 0.04, leaving a short distance between this and the previous mask generator. This will be the thickness of the stitching. Finally, I set the second generator's mode to subtract. This will subtract it from the previous generator, leaving just a narrow line along the seams. Next, I add a fill on top of the generators and the fabric diagonal thin procedural texture to it. I increase the filter styling to 10 and the texture style parameter to 16 and set its mode to subtract. This will break up the continuous line, giving me individual stitches. Now I can go back to the stitching material and adjust the color and height. To remove possible unwanted stitching areas, as this method covers all seams, I add a paint filter to the mask and use a black brush over them. In some cases, manual stitching by creating a paint layer and using a stitching tool on it is preferred. For such cases, there are several stitching tools that ship with Painter and they support several kinds of stitching including running, double and overlock, as well as several kinds of thread. I find it more intuitive and precise to use this technique in the 2D view, holding shift while clicking, to create straight lines between selected points. One final check by rotating the light around the dress to identify potential problematic areas before exporting. Bear in mind that the scene's HDRI can be changed from the environment settings so that you can preview your model in several lighting scenarios. Shift plus right click plus drag rotates the HDRI. Once happy with the result, I can go to File, Export Textures, set the directory, template and file type and create the maps for all channels and UV tiles. However, in this case, I prefer to send the dress directly to Substance Stager through the Send to Substance Stager button. Over in Stager now, the model loads with all maps in place and as soon as I turn ray tracing on, it will render as intended. Rendering with the GPU tends to be faster depending on the computer specifications. I previously downloaded the mannequin from the Substance Asset Library and textured it with Painter. Shift plus left mouse button plus drag rotates the lights similarly to Painter. The creases are a little too prominent, so I will delete the dress and go back to Painter for some tweaking. I balance the layers a little more 
and make the overall effect more subtle before sanding the dress to stager again. From the starter assets panel, I drag and drop a three-point light setup into the scene. With the environment selected in the scene panel and in the light properties, I hide the environment light and adjust the key light settings so that it hits the dress from the front right and highlights the dress's features. I put the fill light front left and adjust it so that it partly fills the shadows created by the key light. I then play around with the backlight before deciding to take it off altogether as it does not contribute to my scene. From the starter asset models, I drag a plane into the scene, rotate and scale it in the 3D view and using the transform panel so that it becomes my backdrop. I also add a gray matte standard material to it from Stager's basic material presets. I add a camera from the camera menu and set its resolution to 2K and its focal length to 100 which is better for product photography. I select the backdrop plane and darken its color so that the dress pops a little more, although I plan to work on the backdrop in Photoshop once the render is completed, so this is really a placeholder. I rename my scenes objects appropriately and I'm expanding the dresses model folder in the scene panel, which includes four objects representing the four UV tiles I painted in Painter. I can now select these and adjust the strength of the channel maps. As an example, if I want to make the fabric more sheer, I can click on the opacity map, double click the preview to open it in Photoshop, and add an adjustment layer to darken it. Saving the document will update the map in Stager, where the dress fabric now looks more sheer. After a few more adjustments, I arrived at this result, which I am now ready to render by going to Stager's render module. Here, I can select the camera I wish to render, along with its attached resolution, the name of the file to export, its format, and the export directory. I normally use the medium preset for everyday renders, as I find it offers a good balance between quality and speed. For production, I would normally use at least 1000 samples, so I would probably opt for the high preset. Stager also denoises the final result to make rendering times shorter and to fix possible Firefly artifacts on difficult scenes. For stills, I normally use the PSD format so I can do some basic post work in Photoshop. PSD renders include additional layers for selecting object and background easily. I downloaded a few images from Adobe Stock and mixed them here to create a backdrop. I made a close-up shot by creating a second camera and adjusting the lights to be complementary to this part of the dress. I find Stager to be a great tool for fashion visualization as I can send design iterations directly from Painter and visualize styles and collections in real time. The latest Stager release also supports animation, so 360 turntables are now possible and very easy to set up and render. This concludes this series of tutorials on hero assets for fashion. I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing some of your work based on these techniques as well as feedback on these tutorials.